Hello and welcome to this short video today about five common problems on a Fiat Fiorino 1.3 van. So these vans are actually the same as a Citroen Nemo and a Peugeot Bipper, so it doesn't matter which vehicle it is, they're all the same, they're the same engine, same gearbox and even the same chassis, it's just the, the badge that's different. Hopefully this video will be useful, if you're thinking about buying one, there should be easy checks to do and follow from what I say, which will help you in making a, an informed decision when purchasing one. And maybe you already own one of these vehicles and you're worried about keeping it well maintained, hopefully this video will help you in um, keeping your van on the road and dealing with any issues that you may have and getting them checked out sooner rather than later. So the first issue, which is by far the most important, as this is a 1.3 chain driven engine, is the timing chain. So I'm just going to open the bonnet quickly. This will help me show you some of these issues. One of the issues which actually isn't on this original list, which is a very common problem, is the bonnet stays. The things that keep the, the, the bonnet open are not very well made from Citroen and they're prone to failure. So I'm actually having to keep this open with a stick. That's something to look for, not on the original list, but important nonetheless. You can buy replacement ones on eBay relatively cheaply. So the first issue which I'm going to talk to you about, as I've said, is the timing chain. This is the most important part of, a, of a, most engines as it keeps the vehicle engine running and without it, if it breaks, you've got serious engine troubles. So the way to check for this, if you've got any issues normally, is on these vehicles, when you start it, you're going to hear a chain rattle for a few seconds. Now this is very bad. If you hear this noise, it's a sign that your timing chain is noisy. And if it's noisy, it normally means it's stretched. And if it gets stretched to a certain extent, can break, which is very bad, and it will kill your engine. So when you turn it on, this is how one should sound. I'll do it again. There should be no difference in noise, no chain rattles. If you hear a noise for about two or three seconds, which sounds rattly, noisy, and then it goes back to normal, that's the sign that you've got a noisy timing chain, which is very, very bad. If I turn the vehicle on, I'll also show you where it's located in the engine. Okay. So again, if you hear a rattling noise coming from this area, that can be a sign that you're, that is a sign that you've got a noisy timing chain. So that is number one. Make sure you've got no rattling noises when you first start the vehicle from coal. Second issue, which to check for, is um, these vans often suffer from turbo problems. Number one way to check this is when it's from cold, the vehicle, as you can see, the temperature gauge is not, not high, it's not in the middle. You wanna make sure there's no smoke coming from the back of the vehicle, out of the exhaust. If you see white smoke, that can be a sign that your turbo um, is, is faulty so it should start it shouldn't be an excessive smoke and when you rev it there shouldn't be any smoke coming from the the vehicle and this will especially happen if the turbo is faulty this will happen when it is cold another way to check if the turbo is faulty is check the oil level which is here I'm just going to clean it quickly now. So we just cleaned it, no oil. Now if the turbo is faulty, it will be consuming oil. And so you'd have a low oil level. As you can see, this one is fine. There's oil come back out on the dipstick. If your oil level is low on one of these vans, that can be a symptom that you've got a turbo problem. Okay, so check 
check for smoke coming out of the exhaust and also check the oil level and check for oil leaks around the turbo. Your turbo's here. If you see this covered in oil, this one, it's hard to see because of the cover, but there's no oil on the cover, it's all bone dry. That's exactly as it should look. So that is another issue. Turbos number number two. Number three, which is another common problem on these vehicles, is injector problems. Can be expensive to repair, and um, that's not what you want to be um, having to outlay loads of money on expensive repair bills when you've got a, a van on the road. So a few ways to check for this, uh, make sure you've got no injector issues. When you start the vehicle, you want the vehicle to be deadly still. If it's misfiring ever so slightly and doesn't feel normal, that can be a sign that you've got an injector problem. Obviously the vehicle is going to be on, so you're gonna have some movement, but it should be relatively still. As you can see in my hand here, there's no excessive movement. So if it's moving like this and misfiring, that can be a sign that you've got um, an injector, one injector broken. There's four injectors in the engine. I have moved this slightly open so you can see them. They're here, okay? That's an injector. If there's fuel covered all in around this area, that can be a sign that your injectors are faulty as well. So if you see fuel on the top part of the engine, a fluid on the top, that can be another sign that you've got an injector problem. So check for your timing chain, number one, check turbo, number two, and then check for Injector problems, number three. Number four, a really common fault on these is the strut mounts. They often fail, this is a suspension um, item just on the top part of this, um, in, inside the engine area, between the dash and the engine. Now, if you've got a faulty strut mount, you'll hear a clonking noise when you steer it. If you hear this one, it's deadly still. There's no clonking noise. You'll hear it, it's very noticeable sound very loud so turn the steering wheel around and if you hear a clunking noise that can be a sign that you've got a, a noisy strut mount uh, maybe on one driver side or the passenger side or both so that's another thing to look out for turn the steering wheel around make sure there's no clunking noises the last issue number five to check for on these vehicles is the gear lever here these vans are prone to having a very sloppy gear lever if it's got excessive movement in the in the neutral position, that can be a sign that your your gear lever or selector is faulty. Now these vans are relatively cheaply designed, and so it, it doesn't really flick back into neutral like some gearboxes will. But if it's excessively, this one is fine. If it's excessively loose here, that can be a sign that your your gear lever is faulty and will need replacing. Not particularly expensive repair, um, but again, it's something you want to check for. So you make sure it's not too sloppy here. It should be like this, um, and it should not feel too loose. So those are the five issues which I've mentioned in the video to check for when buying one of these vehicles. They are very economical, these vans, but they do suffer from um, mechanical issues in including what I've said, timing chains, injectors, turbos, they're the serious mechanical issues, um, and then the strut mount and the gear lever, slightly less um, expensive to repair. The strut mount, you're probably looking at a couple of hundred pounds, and the gear lever, maybe a little bit more, but not a lot. But if you've got a turbo problem, that's gonna cost you a fair bit more to get repaired, maybe seven to 800 pounds, injectors, much more expensive and the timing chain if the engine breaks you need an engine rebuild but if you get the timing chain done preventatively you're probably looking at about six to seven hundred pounds these are estimates this is based on on trade values which i would get it done for so that should give you a ballpark figure of how much these are going to cost you so look out for these issues when you're buying one or you're test driving it um, use the information that i've given you hopefully this will help you in making an informed decision when buying one of these bands. Hope you've enjoyed the video and it's been useful to you. Thanks for your time today watching the video. Bye bye.